I'm back, come back, come back again. I'm back now to the friend. Okay, people, thanks for coming back to my YouTube channel to see my tutorials on Android. And I am making this one again about this, but I am giving them more functionality than from before. So if you don't know anything about list or what I've done, go and see some of my last tutorials about list. This is part three now, and I have added um, two buttons. I've added a edit text field, and I moved things around a little bit. Um, as I said, go to my last tutorial to find out um, how I did the list. Um, at the end of this tutorial, you'll see how I've done this. And um, what I've done is I can click any one of these items. It shows up there. I can click delete and it will delete. Um, I can click another one, data free, and it will delete. And if I want to add something, I can click on this edit text field. The keyboard comes up and I can add whatever I want like this and then add it. And as you see, it appends it to the bottom of the list. And to show that it's really working, add something else. And you see it appends to the bottom of the list. Oops, click add. And once again, I can click that and I can delete and it deletes it. Okay, so by the end of this video, you'll learn how I've done this really dodgy application, extremely basic application. And yeah, so keep watching. Continue. So first of all, I'm gonna do the layout. And I'm, this, trust me, this layout does not look very nice, but it's just basically trying to show you how to get it done. I'm not trying to make a fancy layout. No, no, no. I'm just trying to show you how it works. Okay, so let's put a edit text field. You see that it says edit text. Um, I'm gonna put an edit text field at the bottom like so. And it, see what happens there. And this is still under this linear layout, which is vertical. And there's too much of a big gap here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of the, the margin here, which I remember putting before. So let's go to margin. I'm gonna change this 70 dp to say 30. So that's moved that up a bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another linear layout which is horizontal. Um, as I said on my last video, I will do a tutorial on layouts. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna add this uh, linear layout inside of this other linear layout at the bottom. So now I've got a linear layout within a linear layout. And what this does is it does horizontal, or actually, yeah, horizontal type layout. So what I'm gonna do is now add two buttons, like one, like so. As you see, it takes up the whole width. And then I'm gonna add another one, like so. So now you've got two buttons. Click on this and let's change, let's call the ID add button so we know what we're doing. Let's call this add button. We have to look for the text field. Okay, let's call this add. And click on the second button and then let's call this delete. So I'm gonna change the ID here to say delete button. Okay, so now we've got two buttons. One's called add, one's called delete. Let's go in the text field here. And let's change it from saying name to just give it a, um, we can give it a hint. There's something called hint. We say add text here. So as you see, it shows a little hint. Okay, so, so that's what we've got. We've got a really basic, terrible, terrible screen layout. Uh, but it doesn't matter, let's just run it anyway. We'll see what it looks like. Okay, so this is what we've got the list. We've got the text view, we've got the, the edit text, the add and the delete. Okay, fine, great, great, great. So let's get back to the programming now. 
So when it comes to Android, as you know from my last um, tutorials, you must wire everything. So what did we change? We added an edit text field. So let's do that first. Go to the main activity. Um, this time you see, uh, I had a comment about the fonts and so forth on, on the development environment. So I've changed the fonts to slightly bigger. See, I do listen to my feedback. See, so if you leave comments, I will, I will try and um, change things from the feedback. So, okay, so edit text field. Let's create an edit text field. We have to create an edit text object from the class. So let's say, um, I always do this. I'm really bad at doing variable names. I say my edit text. Okay, we wire it. So let's put under here, edit text. Oops, sorry. Let's put here, my edit text equals edit text find view by id and let's put r dot id dot what did i call it edit text oh, i didn't give it a proper name never mind and in fact we've got two buttons so my add button and we've also got another button haven't we we've got one called my let's call it my delete button okay so that's um initial no we've declared two buttons now obviously we have to wider buttons let's widen them get it all out of the way my ads button equals button if you're not really sure what I'm doing here, if you look at some of my other videos, you will you this you will understand what I'm doing. I'm just wiring the widgets to the programmatic code. Uh, my delete button equals button find view r dot id dot. Let's do delete button. Okay, so now. Okay, so we've declared the variables, we've initialized the variables, or we've wired the variables, should I say. Now that we've got everything wired up, what we want to do is when the person clicks on the add button, anything that is in the edit text field will get appended to the list. So let's do that. Um, we have a button, the add button here. So we need to add a listener to the button. You say my add button dot set on click listener. This we need to implement the implement the class. Uh, it says what does it say? Cast parameter. No, no, no. So let's at the top say. So let's add the class at the top on click listener. Okay, that's good. Implement methods. So it implements on click. Now let us add code for when the add button gets clicked. So we can do an if statement that compares the view dot get ID to the my add button dot get ID. And then we can put some code in for that. So let's do a quick string that says what user entered equal my edit text dot get text to string. So we want to convert it to string. Now we get the list, my data, dot add. So we're gonna append to the end whatever was in that edit text field. 
So most people will think, oh, that's it. That's all you have to do. You have to just do my data dot add and then put the string in and then the, the list will automatically get updated on the screen. No, um, the important thing here is you need to let the adapter know what's going on. You need to notify the adapter that something's changed. So the method for this is um, notify data set change. This is very important because if you don't tell it that something's changed, it won't update the list. So that's it really. Um, I'm not doing any more checks at the moment of what's in the text field. Um, so even if you just press enter, it, it will just add a blank. So let's just do this because I just want to see if it works first and then I could do some more checks. Right, so at the moment we have data 16 is the last one. So let's click here and let's say, let's just type QWERTY and click that. So QWERTY is there, let's click add. So as you see, look, it has added QWERTY to the bottom. The next step is to give functionality to this delete button. So for example, if I click to data two and I click delete, it will delete data two and nothing else. So let's do that. So let us wire my delete button dot set on click listen to this. That's the easy part. I'm now doing a, an else if condition to check the view ID against the button ID, the get by ID. I'm creating a global variable called selected list position and I'm going to initialize it here equals minus one. You'll see why I did it in a minute. Now I'm going to say in this, so when the person clicks on the item in the list, this integer here has the position number in the list. <clears throat> So I'm going to say that selected list I in position equals I. So I pass that position to that variable from inside this method to the global. And then I am going to later on on this when on click is called, I'm going to grab that information. I'm going to say my data dot remove and I'm going to say the selected item position because now that holds the position and we must remember to update the array adapter by saying notify now what's going to happen is it should delete the right position in the list so let's test this let's click Okay, so let's click on 13 and let's click delete. So as you can see, it says 10, 11, 12, 14, 15. It's got rid of, it's got rid of 13. And let's click on two and delete. Now, so that's working, but watch what happens when I click delete again and delete again. You see, um, because the position, because the variable selected list position it's still equal to two or one or whatever the number was. It's going to keep deleting that position number. Um, so eventually I'm going to delete everything in the list, which is not what I want. So let's go back and see what we can do about that. What we want to do is we maybe want to initialize after we've deleted, it might be a good idea to set the variable back to another number that doesn't exist and then check for that. So let's do it here. Um, so on this bit here where it says my deleted button get ID, let us say after the remove and the notify change, let's immediately select 
make that variable equals minus one. Yeah, immediately. So then in this condition now, we will also check, and we've got two ampersands together says, if the first one is true, then check the second one. So that means if this is true, then do the next check. So this check here is saying, if and selected list position is not equal to minus one. So if you're new to programming, this might be a bit confusing, but what's actually happening is, I'm doing the first check here. So you know this, get, get the view ID and then compare it to the button ID. And so if that's true now, we're gonna say, do the following, and that says, check to see if the selected list position does not equal minus one. So if it does not equal minus one, that means that it's got to equal something else, which means the user has clicked on something and therefore execute the following functions, which is remove and then update the list. And then at the end, what it says is, it sets the selected list position to minus one. So what it's doing is it's reinitializing it to almost to say false or something. So say for example, the user selects a list item, presses the delete button, and then doesn't select another list item, and then just presses the delete button straight away again. This selected list position variable is still set to minus one. So what that means is, this is a false statement because this selected list position not equal to minus one is false. And therefore it won't execute this. It's a bit, I know it's a bit awkward to understand if you need to program in, but it, you know, it works because it, because this is a knot, because this is a knot here, it gets a bit confusing. And also this here, what that means is only execute the following statement if the first one's true. So we're getting a little bit more advanced here. Um, if I, I run this, you'll see what happens. Okay, so this time I'm gonna select three and then I'm gonna click delete. And it's deleted, like so it's one, two, four now. So let's click five. And as you see, it's one, two, four, six. So it's deleted. But if I click delete again, it doesn't do anything. Nothing's getting deleted. I click one, I click delete. If I click delete, nothing more gets deleted because select to list item position now equals minus one. So we've almost select, this in programming, this is called like a flag. You're setting it like to true or false. So now it's not possible to delete anymore. Okay, okay thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped you um, with programming in Android lists. Um, remember to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. And peace.